This video was made possible by Wix. If you're ready to create a website, head on over to wix.com slash go slash infographics 2019 to try out one of their premium plans right now. So far, we featured one episode on winning the lottery that showed us that suddenly becoming a multi-millionaire can be an absolute curse. The people we discussed had dreamed of riches, but in the end it led to their ruin. Still, we'd like to think that many of you would go on to live a wonderful life after collecting your massive check. You'd sail into the sunset, pocket it's full of gold and never worry about money again. That's the dream, and that's why so many people play the lottery. According to a Gallup poll in 2016, about half of adult Americans play the state lottery, and many of those were classified as low-income families or individuals. In fact, it's said in all, Americans spend about $80 billion on state lotteries in a year, which works out to about $250 a person. This just shows you how desperate people are to get their hands on a windfall. But you all know the chance of winning the big prize is low, with the website The Balance saying in 2018 that the odds of you winning either the Mega Millions or the Powerball are about 1%. 175 million to 1. Yep, you've all heard this before, but we'll say it again. You have more chance of being struck by lightning. CBS News reported that your chance of being hit by a bolt in any given year is about 1 in 960,000. Your odds of being struck twice in an entire lifetime, if you live until the average age, are about 1 in 9 million. This shows just how hard it is to get your hands on the big prize. If you're in the USA, you have more chance of being bitten by a shark, being seriously injured while on an amusement park ride, dying in an act of terrorism and much more chance of being mauled by a tetchy bear. We think you get the picture. But what if you had a hack, a system, a way of lessening those odds? Is that possible? And if it was possible, wouldn't all great mathematical minds and members of the mafiosi already achieved a win? Welcome to the story of Jerry and Marge Selby. This couple were in love in school and they are still in love now as they enjoy their autumn years. They have lived in a very small town in Michigan called Everett for many years. They had six kids and ran a convenience store and were well known to the other 19 inhabitants of the town. The American news media told us that Marge worked magic making sandwiches at the store, while Jerry took care of vice and liquor and cigarettes. She was 62 and he was 63 when they decided they'd had enough and sold the store. What was their plan? They said it was just to put their feet up, relax, catch up on some TV, and take it easy. They hadn't even taken a day off or at least closed the store in 17 years. This was a deserved retirement, and they were certainly not planning on becoming multi-millionaires. Then one fine day, Jerry noticed a new lottery game called Windfall. He later told the media that he'd always been good at math and had in his younger years gotten a degree in the subject. When he looked at this game, he immediately had one of those great eureka moments. I read it. And by the time I was out here, I knew what the potential might be," he told CBS News in 2019. The year he made his fateful discovery was 2003. So his discovery didn't come by months of investigation. He said he realized after a mere three minutes or so that there was a loophole in this lottery, or what he called a special feature. He explained that with a lottery such as the Mega Millions, the prize money goes up when no one wins the jackpot. The difference with Windfall was that when no one took the big prize, the jackpot rolled down, so the people with fewer correct numbers won. The prize wasn't as big of course, but at least the people who who had gotten fewer numbers correct all got a decent payout. To you and me, to most people, we might not see anything special about this. We certainly might not be thinking that millions of dollars are coming our way. But old Jerry was a smart cookie and he immediately spotted a way to crack this lottery. We're gonna let Jerry explain his system to you because he can do that clearer than we can. This is what he told the American news media. Here's what I said. I said if I played $1,100 mathematically, I'd have one four-number winner. That's a thousand bucks. I divided 1100 by 6 instead of 57 because I did a mental quick and dirty and I came up with 18. So I knew I'd have either 18 or 19 three-number winners and that's 50 bucks each. At 18, I got $1,000 for a four-number winner and I got 18 three-number winners worth $50 each. So that's 900 bucks. So I got $1,100 invested and I got a $1,900 return. That's about an 80% profit on his investment. Now, while his system might sound a little complicated to some, Jerry said it was actually very basic arithmetic. For that reason, his first thought was, hmm, if I worked it out, then a whole load of other math-savvy people must have also figured it out. But you know what? They hadn't. When the first roll-down was announced, he went out and bought $3,600 worth of tickets. He got back $6,300. He then put out another $8,000 and got pretty much double that amount back. 
Jerry must have been laughing all the way to the bank at this point. He then told his wife he had been putting thousands of their retirement savings into the lottery, adding that there was no risk because he had cracked it. She wasn't even surprised, saying when he told her it all made perfect sense. The only thing that really confused Jerry was why no one else had worked it out. He just kept doing what he had been doing, but investing more and more money, so much so that he started a company called GS Investment Strategies. In an interview with CBS, he showed the journalist details of every win, pointing out one big one where he had bet $515,000 and turned it into $853,000. He then sold shares in the company to friends and family and started giving them back massive returns on their investments. Most of these people, besides family, were the other small town inhabitants they had known for many years. It was as if most Money was raining on the town. Jerry explained to them the math behind it, and he also told the media that it made perfect sense to them. They all did very well out of it, with one of Jerry's friends saying, it helped me put three kids through school and one through law school, so it was quite beneficial to me. By 2005, Jerry had 25 members of his lottery club, and they were all winners. Some of those people were police, a factory manager, and a bank manager. But then, Michigan suddenly closed down the game, saying lack of sales was to blame. It was game over. And we all know that good things don't always last. But then the sun shone again over this little town. One of Jerry's group members told him that there was a game in Massachusetts that had quite similar odds. Jerry told the media, so I got on the computer, I looked at the game, and once I researched, it, I got back with him and said, we can play that game. Indeed he could, and he said it only took him about 10 minutes to find the solution to guaranteed winning in that game. The group started throwing cash at Jerry again. For six whole years, Jerry and Marge would drive 900 miles to Massachusetts when they saw that there was a roll down. They'd walk and drive all day, buying hundreds of thousands of tickets. Just doing that took effort, and the couple said it became more like a job, sometimes working 10 hours a day. They saved millions of losing tickets just in case anyone investigated them. What they were doing was not illegal, they were just playing the game, but they needed proof of that. The couple also said that they didn't mind at all the long drives and the hard work, only because it always led to their friends and family winning. It was all worth it. And then, in 2011, the Boston Globe seemed to be onto them. It had received a tip-off that someone or some people had been buying certain lottery tickets in an incredibly high volume all at certain places in Massachusetts. The funny thing was, the Globe not only figured out that if you bought enough of these tickets for that particular game, you'd be guaranteed a win, but the investigator discovered that there were two two groups of people doing this. The reporter saw one of those syndicates was the Selby couple, but their competition was none other than the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Well, some students there. Those students that didn't have too much disposable income, as is often the case with those at university, got a few of their friends to start investing in the scheme. They actually got enough cash together to bet millions over seven years, and at the end, they had amassed around three and a half million dollars in profits. When the story broke, the game was closed down immediately and an investigation happened, led by the then State Inspector General. He told the press his team looked hard for some kind of corruption, some form of scam, anything illegal, but nothing illegal had occurred. I was dumbfoundedly amazed that these math nerd geniuses had found a way to legally win a state lottery and make millions from it, he later said. Over nine years, that company the Selbys had founded made around $26 million gross. Most of the cash they'd made went to their kids, grandkids, and future great-grandkids, but they also spent some of their cash renovating their house. The media reported that the little gang of winners still hang out together, but these days it's mostly when they bet a few dollars playing poker together. On those nights, Marge is said to cook up one of her famous chicken pot pies. To this day, Jerry says the only thing that really amazes him is that no one else figured it out, or at least until the MIT students did. The couple has warmed the hearts of the American public as well as impressed the press. They've been called the lottery hackers, been interviewed on 60 Minutes, and it seems that their story might become a Hollywood movie. Nowadays, everybody needs a great looking website and if you've ever shopped around for someone to design one for you then you know that sometimes it feels like you need to win the lottery just to afford a great looking site. Luckily Wix is here for those of us without tens of millions in the bank. Their selection of hundreds of fully customizable templates lets you drag and drop your way to a great looking site in seconds. Or you can use their robust design tools to build a site completely from the ground up. Plus, Wix's subscription services offer 24-7 live support in case you ever need it, and you can be sure that your site is always going to look great, no matter the device. Try out Wix today by visiting the link in the description or going to wix.com go infographics 2019. 
What do you think about this couple? Do you think the method was as basic as Jerry said? If it was, how come no one else figured it out? Tell us your answers in the comments. Also, be sure to check out our other video, Thief Who Hijacked a Plane and Stole a Million Dollars. Thanks for watching and as always, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you next time.